Hi everyone, uh, my name is Arash Kia. I'm a director of clinical data science in Mount Sinai Health System and assistant professor of uh, anesthesiology in Icon School of Medicine. Uh, it's my pleasure to share uh, our ex experience uh, in developing and uh, operationalizing NLP applications uh, in acute care settings. So uh, for this presentation, uh, so I start with actually uh, from the general overview of AI, what we call AI, because AI is very actually in, in, the, uh, in the healthcare domain is very vague, yeah. And uh, then uh, I'll try to actually walk you through our uh, journey uh, in CDS and clinical data science team in uh, Mount Sinai Health System. And then a little bit, actually, we, we want to touch the uh, platform overview. So what kind of, when we talk about actually NLP um, ap ap applications and pipelines, what we uh, uh, actually mean. And then uh, I showcase two use cases, two different use cases, uh, and done. So the first actually uh, uh, topic is uh, AI definition. When we call it uh, actually AI uh, in our um, kind of, uh, in whatever I present today, uh, I'm referring to the system, which uh, basically has three main components. Uh, it's uh, EMR, uh, which is actually as a data producer. Uh, we have the users, uh, clinicians, different type of clinicians based on the use case. Uh, and then uh, the application, ML applications. So everything in this actually, uh, in this system should be uh, automated. That's first actually feature. The second thing, so this system should uh, be able to process and analyze actually large amount of data. Uh, it should extract meaningful, specifically meaningful clinical uh, insights. And uh, it also should uh, actually adopt the behavior, its behavior. So the classical uh, classic example is like, uh, so when we actually create a, a profile for each patient all the time, all the features are not available, yeah? So it should be able to handle the uh, missing values uh, or all different actually uh, things that happening uh, in the real time actually prediction. And the other thing, the system should improve their uh, actually performance uh over the time yeah that continuous learning uh is very Im important here uh i don't want to actually delve uh deeply into uh the um, are actually uh, uh ai responsible ai best practices and standards in uh mount sinai health system but just for your information um so we have a um, ai uh, uh, governance committee uh, which uh, establishes uh, all the standards, metrics uh, that we need, actually need uh, to be sure that uh, whatever we develop uh, and implement uh, is safe uh, and also uh, fair for patients and all the stakeholders, uh, hold, uh, stakeholders involved in this actually uh, in each uh, project. So now let's see what uh, actually we have done so far in uh, MSHS. So the first actually uh, in the first slide, I want to uh, uh, I want to start with actually the point that uh, where we conceptualize uh, the whole op optimization actually strategy. Uh, so it's actually it's the main focus would be in decision support cycle, yeah. So whatever is happening uh, at the bedside uh, and that decision actually cycle has three different components. It's, it has data, it has knowledge and learning. In the data, uh, actually let's, uh, let's assume that I'm actually a hospitalist, uh, I'm at bedside. And uh, so what I do is actually, uh, I take a look all the uh, documented evaluation measurements happened uh, for the actually patients. I try to check the trend of, for example, BUN, creatinine, uh, and so on. 
And then, uh, and all this actually comorbidities, complications, signs, symptoms, many different things, and come up with actually some uh, different uh, kind of uh, di uh, differential diagnosis that this is my top three diagnosis for this patient. And then based on that, I stick with one of them and uh, come up with a treatment plan, uh, give actually, uh, ask request actually some consults, nephrology consults, uh, neurology consult, refine my, uh, my actually differential diagnosis and treatment, and altogether actually it creates a quality of care. So uh, without that, okay, this is very good actually um, kind of uh, opportunity for us. We can automate this process. We can use the ML applications, ML engines actually to uh, extract that uh, knowledge that inside that we, we look for. And with the closed loop with the users, we can also uh, somehow uh, refine uh, the actually uh, the knowledge, the insight that we are uh, generating and uh, creating actually ML-based quality of care. I don't want to actually go inside of the is uh, product development uh, life cycle in, and explain it in details. We don't have time, but uh, what we do is actually pretty simple and based on the common sense. Yeah, we get the uh, idea of the opportunity of actually optimization uh, or problem uh, statement from the uh, leadership uh, from different actually uh, service lines, and then try to translate it into the. Uh, technology uh, language, um, build some actually uh, models, pipelines, applications, and then uh, put it in the actually production, do the silent pilot, see everything is okay, and then uh, start with uh, within a very small uh, point of cares uh, and small uh, number of users, uh, check that everything is going very well, refine the workflow, and then uh, actually scale up across um, one hospital or across health system. And this uh, life cycle is uh, going uh, on and on. So within this actually uh, a frame, uh, we developed uh, from 2018 till now, something around actually six, uh, different um, products uh, and deployed for six hospitals uh, and we are generating more than actually 15 million predictions per, per day. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the actually the products pretty diverse um, from different actually uh, risk stratification uh, application like malnutrition risk prediction, delirium risk prediction uh, to actually something like uh, when winning, which is uh, identifying what, when is the best time to uh, actually extubate patients and stop the mechanical ventilation, to uh, the actually recent uh, project which we uh, are building actually our uh, language model uh, to detect uh, stigmatizing language in uh, clinical notes. Uh, majority of these actually uh, products uh, are hybrid. It means that they're actually using more than one modality. Uh, for example, uh, for the one of the use cases that I want to actually uh, present today, delirium risk prediction, we are using the structured semi-structured semi data such as actually lab and nursing flow sheet, vitals, EKG, uh, and also um, actually notes. As another uh, actually modality. So let's review our uh, actually platform. So this is very general overview of uh, what we called clinical this, uh, data science actually uh, platform, which we have. If you can, uh, as you can see here, there's actually different uh, platforms here. Uh, the ADT platform, the electronic medical record, which we are using Epic lab, different lab platforms. And also we have uh, actually variable uh, devices can actually send the data to, into our actual gateway. Um, the imaging, the packs, uh, which, is, which is also sending uh, uh, data, real-time data for us. Uh, we are in the middle of actually uh, integration with the EMS. It hasn't been actually uh, done yet, but it's in, in our roadmap. Uh, in this actually uh, flowchart, as you can see, we use uh, active integration gateway AIG, which is Cloverleaf, 
to as we, we are using it as a gateway and then we also use an interface very lightweighted interface mert connect to uh, actually communicate with uh, all the platforms through this gateway and get all the HL HL7 actually messages put it in actually our data lake and uh, different streaming data services which they what they are doing is uh, actually creating different levels uh, single view data um, uh, at the patient level visit level and uh, based on the use case is different uh, and then actually using machine learning uh, application to get the data, uh, prepare uh, for the model, pass it to the model, generate prediction. And then uh, either what we do is actually uh, push it back to the EPIC, uh, the EMR uh, for the passive notification or for active notification, we are using the smart uh, actually uh, pager we are using the smartphone um, application um, epic application haiku uh, or we send it to the actually common center we have different actually pipelines we have imaging pipeline we have actually pipeline for structured semi-structure here I'm, I'm only showing actually the nlp uh, pipeline so starting point is from the epic they're sending us different type of actually unstructured uh, data like uh, different type of notes i put here only one example progress note but it has actually more than uh, 50 different type of note ed note consult note um or note um, and and so on and also some reports like radiology reports or um, pathology reports uh, so what the, this platform does actually it has uh, it stitched together some of the um, actually modules uh, from the Spark NLP, uh, from the JSL framework uh, to do the uh, tokenizing and uh, normalizing. And we are using actually a different type of actually embedding, sentence embedding, word embedding, birth, bio birth, uh, and also different pre-trained actually in our model. And sometimes what we do, we are using the annotation lab uh, to do the active learning and uh, actually um, fine-tune the pre-trained model that we get from JSL. And then uh, extract different kind type of actually entities. Uh, here, I, I just actually provided a uh, very actually small uh, number of uh, examples, diagnosis, uh, sign and su symptoms. We are using also medication, image finding. And for each one, we are using actually a specific uh, type of the um, kind of the NER model. And then uh, we do actually our, apply our different feature engineering approach and um, actually select uh, appropriate features, vectorizing, train the model, and then uh, optimize that. And then uh, actually, let's say that actually we, uh, we have our own model and our, the, came up with our application. Uh, so usually we, for the de deployment, we are using, uh, using actually Azure and in a hybrid actually uh, formation, yeah. So uh, as you can see here, we have uh, our actually database, MongoDB on-premise. Uh, we are our code uh, actually repo in Bitbucket outside of actually Azure. And also we push uh, all the model objects, normalization maps, assemble objects into the blob storage. And then using Azure actually pipeline, um, everything is YAML based and create a Dockerize, push a Docker to the Azure Container Registry, and then using the uh, Azure Kubernetes uh, services uh, to uh, run the job and schedule it. Uh, it can be actually one time per day. Sometimes it's actually mini patches two, three times, and sometimes it's uh, fully um, kind of uh, in the streaming uh, um, actually mode, which uh, is based on different triggers, for example, uh, update in the lab, update in the node, and so on. Now, let's actually, within this background, let me uh, actually showcase two different use cases, uh, which is mainly uh, in the uh, computational psychi uh, psychiatry. The first one is actually in, um, delirium, which is uh, actually uh, the confusion state happening uh, as an um, acute episodic uh, event in the actually, uh, in the, specifically in the acute care setting. So uh, here I, I want to show that how 
uh, we actually came up with this ML-based uh, delirium screening uh, and what was the impact. So the main challenges in delirium is uh, actually uh, is first is actually the uh, is the assessment is very subjective and uh, usually the inter-rated reliability between the cl clinicians who actually evaluate patients for delirium is very low. Uh, there are limited tools for screening. Majority of them are actually um rule-based engine and uh or uh, such as actually simple questionnaires there is no prognostic value they don't actually create any golden time uh so when they actually identify patient has the actually delirium at that time uh or might have uh, if you want to actually standardize uh, you need to invest in staff training um, and uh, the symptoms are fluctuating because it's uh, uh, episodic, it comes and goes. And usually, actually, it's uh, under-reporting because of all of these uh, challenges. What we came up as an optimization strategy is actually pretty simple. We said that, okay, let's uh, build an application to do the automated clinical profiling uh, for, um, uh, for the patients, the target uh, population. And what we can do then actually send the um, uh, predictions in the EMR and uh, that enables um, a clinician to prioritize the patients. That's the first thing. And then it definitely helps us to a standardization and because now with, a, uh, with actually specific uh, uh, framework, you're sending the, pre uh, the actual predictions. And uh, actually, because for all in in our actually all this uh, kind of systems we have a closed loop between the engine and user and uh, that feedback loop uh, can uh, bring the capacity of uh, continuous learning for us and then hopefully uh, it optimized the identification and with this continuous learning we have continuous improvement so uh, we developed that model with that actually uh, in a hybrid format, structured, unstructured, and using NLP applications. And then every day at uh, actually 5 a.m., uh, then Gene uh, create, uh, does the profiling for the, all the um, patients which are not in the ICU uh, and um, generate the risk score, prediction score, uh, push it into the EPIC patient list. Uh, clinicians actually came and do the confusion assessment. If no, suppress for five days. And if after five days, actually patient stays uh, actually in the state in the in the hospital, then again that profiling profiling happens again. If not, uh, then actually uh, if yes, uh, they identify, then suppress uh, permanently. Uh, then what was the actual performance? Uh, this is sample size of more than 17,000 actually patients. Uh, it shows pretty actually good uh, AUC score, 0 0.95, uh, and uh, pretty actually balanced sensitivity specificity is, um, is pretty uh, actually sensitive, 86%, and the specificity is 90. So what was the actual the impact? For measuring the uh, efficiency, we actually, we have been focused on two things. One, a detection rate, and the other one is actually how the lag the, uh, from the admission. Uh, as you can see here, it uh, actually, uh, when we started with uh, no ML, it was under 5%, and now we are in the, actually on the, around 12%, uh, so in the version two. Uh, and uh, size of the team was five. Uh, we could uh, be able to scale up to all the uh, floors in the uh, one hospital without um, actually uh, increasing the team size. And even actually uh, team size uh, uh, became smaller yeah? so as three person actually is taking care of everything. And the other thing is uh, actually when we started uh, the lag um, was uh, something around 14 days. Now, uh, actually, uh, in version two, uh, we became uh, something around uh, actually less than 12 days. And uh, you can see that significantly actually uh, decreased the admission uh, detection lag. The second actually use case that I want to uh, highlight here is the aggression predictive tool. 
Uh, this is pure NLP uh, application, and the screening is based on this um, NLP application. So to give you background, uh, aggression actually, uh, patient aggression is uh, very um, costly and uh, highly resource and uh, uh, resource re utilization is high because uh, when actually it happens, you need to have uh, one on one uh, observation, and uh, that's actually uh, increased, uh, increases actually the resource utilization significantly. The other thing is increased uh, stress and tension in both patient and provider side. And uh, the other thing is scaling. It has a scaling problem, yeah? So because in order to identify that aggression uh, episode or high-risk patients for aggression, what you need to do is you need to actually have someone uh, the clinicians with the proper uh, psychiatry training, uh, which we cannot actually scale up uh, easily uh, with this uh, limited number of uh, uh, psychiatry um, RNs or psychiatry actually uh, resident fellow um, and physicians uh, actually uh, in uh, other service line like oncology, like actually uh, nephrology and so on. Um, so, but what is the current tool? The current tool is actually based on a questionnaire that uh, the clinicians that should they should go at the bedside and assess the patients for confusion, irritability, uh, boisterous. It's actually six items, and everything is binary, zero one. And at the end, uh, there is a total score, and uh, if it's equal or greater than two, you you, you can say that the patient is high risk. Uh, so first of all, it's very subjective, and the uh, second is actually a problem is um, kind of a low uh, interrated reliability that you can see here. And the third one is actually, uh, basically, there is no prognostic value. Uh, usually, uh, actually, it has the same problem as actually delirium, yeah? Uh, so it doesn't create actually any golden time. What we thought is first, we want to automate this. Let's automate because in that case, we can standardize actually the assessment, this rule base, which is deterministic. And then uh, we can actually build um, um, a classifier on top and to see this, um, what uh, impact we can get. So what we did is uh, we created a cohort uh, and um, what uh, and then actually created the application which looked back 12 uh, past actually 12 hours uh, put together all the care uh, note uh, progress notes and uh, extract those items which uh, in uh, actually Broset uh, questionnaire you saw and then uh, generate expected uh, Broset scores send it to actually epic uh, and then uh, that was actually a pretty successful uh, project because within this uh, uh, um, uh, kind of um, automation, uh, now uh, in the psychiatry units, uh, the nursing staff doesn't, don't need to actually in, in, in each shift uh, do this uh, evaluation for all the patients and then uh, actually the engine is uh, doing that for, for them. And whenever engineers find something equal or greater than two, uh, actually, uh, it, it gets color coded and they can do the actual evaluation. We said that uh, actually the, the, this automation was the actually first step. The second step uh, was actually building a classifier, which same as actually what I showed you, we are using a, a, a JSL um, kind of modules, pre-trained pre models and embedding model, models uh, actually extracting diagnosis, uh, diagnosis uh, sign, symptom, medication, and uh, build the aggression classifier. And then uh, what we did was actually uh, we uh, took all the episode, documented the episode in safety net, and compare the performance of the actual process, which actually uh, has been done by, um, by the um, clinicians, and compare it with uh, actually with automated process and the aggression classifier. It's very interesting. Uh, the uh, actual process uh, done by clinicians, very specific, as you can see here. Uh, perfect, ideal. But the sensitivity is not able to identify any actually 
uh, aggression episode in advance. So whereas uh, automated uh, Rosset, uh, actually the specificity uh, a little bit actually came down, but it's uh, it's showing actually pretty good uh, sensitivities, 40%. And then with aggression classifier, uh, so uh, based on the operational threshold that we um, actually identified um, with the help of uh, the working group and clinicians, uh, based on the uh, actually number of uh, false positive and workload, uh, it shows now actually the sensitivity is something around 50 and uh, specificity above actually uh, 60. And the good thing for this is for this actual brosset and even this automated brosset, there is no continuous refining uh because everything is deterministic yeah uh, but with the aggression classifier we can actually release different versions and improve the performance and also it gives us actually um, capacity uh, of the scaling up uh, to be used not only by the in this within the psychiatry actually units but also with the non-psych actually units and as you can see here in the most important features we got uh, agitation and irritability, same as actually um, that Brusset uh, um, questionnaire, but also it uh, considers um, actually uh, different diagnosis, signs, symptoms, um, and also uh, different type of medications, uh, for example, antipsychotic uh, uh, medications, anti-depression med uh, meditation, and also some um, uh, kind of... Uh, um, comorbidities like dementia and so on. Thank you. And um, so I can, uh, uh, here is my email. Uh, I will be more than happy uh, to get uh, feedback from you guys. And if you think that uh, I can help, uh, we can actually uh, schedule a meeting and go over uh, your use cases or any actually uh, problem that you want to hi highlight. Thanks.